Roswell Flight Test Crew here. We crash so you don't have to. Click subscribe right now before you forget or change your mind. Today we're looking at the FPV Ominous. This was sent to us by Hobbico so we could take a look at it for you. But long before they ever sent it over to us, I was already a big fan of the Ominous. Check this thing out. <laughs> Let's take a look inside the box. So, let's see, we have here, that, and that. Oh, there we go. It's green. Check this out. Okay. And I thought I'd open this box up. And there we have it the Ominous FPV. Very cool. Looks like they're about the same. Actually, looks very similar to the original, just with a little camera on the bottom with a yeah, a little lens that deals back and forth there. It's kind of cool. So let's see, here we have, let's see, uh, we have a battery. And we have foam. Uh, I'm actually a replacement foam for the camera. So extra foam. We have extra props, of course, because you're going to need those. The props are held up with set screws, so screws are there too. That's pretty handy. Of course, we have batteries. The batteries is nice. This is a vast improvement of the previous radio. That's actually quite nice. It's got, uh, Actually, it's got buttons on top here and the back for flip, <laughs> great, flight mode, video recording, still pictures, and video stop, and of course your normal flight control. That's very nice. And next, this is, oh, it's a sunshade. So this is a sunshade for your phone, which you use for the FPV. This is a little clamp for your phone. So this is used to clip your phone onto the radio. And, oh! This is a, what is this? Ah, it's a card reader. That's a USB card reader for micro SD and a micro SD card, two gigabyte. That's neat, they include that. You don't have to go fishing for one of those later on. And of course, a charger for the battery. And that's it for this one. Next is the manual for the Ominous itself. This explains, uh, so we have the batteries in here, we have charging, we have assembly for your radio. We have the software for your phone. It shows basic controls of the aircraft. We have all the buttons on the radio, what those do. We have adjustments. Pretty clearly laid out, pretty good diagrams, actually. Ah, here's an exploded chart of the entire thing, should you want to rebuild it, or you have to for some reason. You know, these things are so durable, I can't imagine this getting that bad to have to rebuild the whole thing, but you know, yeah, it's there. So the first thing I want to do is get the battery charging. This little USB adapter plugs into a laptop or any power source for USB. I've got a little battery handy, so I'm going to plug this into the battery and then plug just this lead right into here. Light comes on and we are charging. And then uh, let's set it aside. Okay, let's take care of the radio next. So, got the radio here. Looks like just the uh, cover just pops off. Got some AA batteries it came with, so let's put those in real quick. And there we are, power comes on, perfect. So next, look, let's attach my phone to the little arm here. Looks like it just expands to accommodate your phone. Okay, maybe not this one. This is a Note 3 with a big case on there, so if you have a big phone, that's not gonna work. But I know like most of you who've got a second phone handy, use this one here. What's smaller? This is just a little droid and fits perfectly. So now that I have the phone attached, let's take a look and see how it mounts to the radio. So I've got the sunshade here, which it's just clips into place above the phone. This attaches to the antenna, so that's interesting. They want it like this. Well, I guess it works. It's a little, little awkward, I suppose, but well, it seems to hold. I'm concerned about all that pressure on this antenna here, but it looks like it pretty, works pretty well, actually. Now that we know the phone fits in there properly, let's install the software. Okay, so this is an Android phone. I'm gonna pull up the Play Store and I'll do a quick search for FPV Cam and search. Okay, so I'm looking at this FPV Cam here. That looks the same as the icon in the manual. I'll try that one and see what, what happens. Install. There it goes. It's a 12.96 megabyte, so 13 megabyte file essentially. So not that big. Okay, we'll install it. Open, take a look at this thing. FPV cam. Oh, 
first we have to join the network for the quad. So it's not going to work until we do that. So next I'm going to do is get the Wi-Fi active to hook the phone to it, but first power on the radio, throttle down, radio on, always a safe good bet there. Let's hook the battery up. Okay, so the battery is done. Light is uh, blinking on the charger. I'm going to pull this thing off and and just an FYI about the battery. Um, they are different from the original ominous batteries. Here's an original and this is the new one. They're both 3.7 volt. They are both uh, 700 milliamps, but the top one, the new one, is 35C versus 25C in the old one. So probably because the extra draw for the camera. And let's see, it goes in the front on this one. And cable extends around the side here. This will activate our Wi-Fi network, which is required for the phone. So looks like we're good to go there. Let's make sure that we're bound and working. There we go. And next, let's join the Wi-Fi network. Okay, it's supposed to say something about FPV on the network. So let's do the network. Let's do our Wi-Fi networks and FPV cam. There it is. Let's tap on that. And according to the manual, the passcode is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Nice and good there. Okay, obtaining IP address. There it is. We're connected now. Okay, so now that we have the network working, I'm going to install the SD card. Now, first, of course, power off the aircraft. Just gonna unplug it real quick. And the SD card goes in the side. So that's pretty handy to include one for you. Perfect. Okay, and power back up then. So once you're in the app and you configure the very first time, you have to hit the plus button here to add the camera. Because this is a network, you could, in theory, I suppose, have multiple cameras, but never seen that before. But let's click on the camera here, add. Okay, Wi-Fi camera is connected. And there we have, well, we have our video signal. A little bit of a little bit of a lag as you can see there, but not horrible for what it is. Okay, let's remove the little tab in front of the camera. This just keeps the lens from being scratched. Okay, we're good to go. All right, so before we go flying, I thought we should compare the new Ominous FPV with its successor, the Ominous. And on initial visual inspection from the top, they look nearly identical. A few little color scheme differences, but basically the same. You line the two up this way, and I really can't see any differences. You flip them over, and here you do see some differences. Just the little landing struts are a little taller to allow for the camera to be underneath. And on the original Ominous, the power comes off the front of the aircraft, whereas in the new one, the power comes out of the back, and also we've got a separate little connector for the camera. And finally, on the Ominous FPV, the uh, propellers are much more aggressive, probably to carry the extra weight. So basically, it looks like the same aircraft, with the only changes being to accommodate the weight and size of the camera. So it's time to fly this thing now, and one thing to keep in mind, it's actually got an agility mode and stability mode and both modes have a high and low rate option. This little button here on the radio triggers that, so it's basically low rate, high rate, a little more aggressive flying, then agility, low rate, high rate. You just tap it, just like with the different modes. Now on the aircraft, the lights will either be flashing or not flashing. Not flashing, the solid lights means that you're in stability mode, good for camera work. If you want to go acrobatic, so lights will be flashing on the aircraft to warn you that you'll be in that, in that new mode. So there are no difference in the lights from high to low rate, but you'll figure that out when you try flying it, of course. Also on the radio, we have the camera start and stop. This is the camera start, or if you press and hold for two seconds, you get a still image. This is the camera stop button. Pretty simple, actually, and of course on your screen, you'll see what's going on. So I've got it in the attitude high rate mode. It actually flies pretty good. It's, it's actually a bit of wind here. It's very stable, getting some decent video from the FPV. <laughs> That's a little bit of a delay for FPV, but you know, it's, it's certainly good for framing up your shot. Right now I'm buzzing a uh, tree over here, and I can see that I'm not gonna hit it, which is pretty cool. You know, I, had, I tried it actually for a brief second in the attitude like beginner mode, 
It was very docile, almost hard to control in the wind, but uh, the more aggressive mode seems pretty good here. So next up, we want to test out the quality of the video, which is coming out of this little camera here. So we're going to fly it around this sculpture and see what it looks like. One thing I like, though, is that there's a little foam rubber block which separates the airframe from the camera. I imagine to help uh, minimize vibration and jello. This is the exact same solution we came up with all those years ago for Raven, so I'm curious to see how it's going to work. Yeah, I'm going to second Tekkenstein here. You wouldn't really want to rely on this thing for FPV because of the delay in the video, but it is very good for framing up shots. So before you can watch the files, you're going to need to download VLC Media Player. It's a free download, so no big deal there. And also be aware that it's recording them as Adobe Flash files, which is a little unusual this day and age, but it certainly works. So once you're ready to go, you pull the memory card out of the ship, you put it in this clever little gizmo they give you, it looks like a miniature thumb drive, slide that into a USB port and you're good to go. As you can see, the video looks okay. No one is going to mistake this for a Phantom 2 Vision Plus or anything, but it's certainly good enough to have some fun with. And as Tekkenstein pointed out earlier, you can tilt the camera lens up or down, and that makes a big difference into whether or not you see the propellers in your shot. So be thinking about that when you're setting up before you go flying. Okay, so one more thing we noticed, and this was both on the phone and the video playback on the computer, is that there's a date timestamp which comes at the bottom of the video. So tell us what you think about the Ominous FPV in your comments below. And if you've watched this video this long, you might as well go ahead and subscribe. And if you already have, get a friend to do it. Well, hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. Alright. Fly safe.